As you all know, Donald Trump announced Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. And I've got to say, I think that this choice is actually pretty bizarre because J.D. Vance doesn't really bring anything unique to the ticket. And there's arguably more downsides with him than there are upsides, uh, at least with regard to the campaign. See, when it came to Mike Pence, you know, he was the establishment choice, the evangelical choice that kind of made up for the areas where Trump lacked or was vulnerable. Whereas with J.D. Vance, you know, Trump isn't accounting for any weaknesses. He's kind of just picking somebody who is the light version of him. So it's arguably a risky choice. Although if Trump were to win, then that would benefit him greatly because, you know, he'll have a vice president now with the same brand of politics as he does, but who's much more loyal. Now, deep down, J.D. Vance doesn't actually care about Donald Trump or Donald Trump's MAGA agenda. He's just playing a character for purposes of political expediency. He is the Republican equivalent of Hillary Clinton, has no beliefs, just cares about power. And I say this because his past comments about Trump, both public and private, they reveal what he actually thinks about him. And spoiler alert, he fucking hates the guy. For example, in a leaked text, he said, I'm not surprised by Trump's rise, and I think the entire party has only itself to blame. We are, whether we like it or not, the party of lower income, lower education, white people. And I have been saying for a long time that we need to offer those people something and hell, maybe even expand our appeal to working class black people in the process or a demagogue would. We are now at that point. Trump is the fruit of the party's collective neglect. I go back and forth between thinking Trump is a cynical asshole like Nixon who wouldn't be that bad and might even prove useful or that he's America's Hitler. Now, those comments were obviously made before Trump became president, but it turns out the guy who said that would one day become the successor to America's Hitler. Now, he's not running to just be Trump's VP. Trump is essentially crowning him as the heir to the MAGA throne. So, you know, when the Trump era is over, J.D. Vance is going to prolong the Trump era or at least try to. Now, the negative comments that he's made against Trump in the past, they've been long documented. You said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him, terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, noxious and reprehensible. So there's a lot there. And Democrats tried to use those comments against him when he was running for the Senate to kind of prove that he's not actually loyal to Donald Trump. But all of those attacks fell flat because what they misunderstood is that when it comes to the MAGA cult, it doesn't really matter where you came from. What matters is where you're at right now. And so long as you're swearing fealty to Trump right now, you're in right now, regardless if J.D. Vance believes any of the shit he's saying, which he doesn't, Trump knows that he's going to be a loyal soldier for him and he's going to say and do whatever he needs to to appease Trump and the MAGA cult. That's the one thing that Trump cares about, loyalty. So if that's your only criteria in finding a VP, Trump made a pretty solid choice. Also, in terms of galvanizing his own base, it's a great pick. But they were already on lock. There's not going to be a single Trump supporter in the country who says, mm, I'm not going to support Trump because I disagree with the VP pick. Right. So one would think Trump would really try to lock down the lead that he has right now over Biden by trying to pick somebody with more appeal to swing state voters and more suburban white voters uh, like women who came out to vote for Donald Trump. But he's not doing that, which kind of tells you a little bit about Trump's mentality right now. He's feeling good. He feels like he doesn't really need to pick somebody to account for his weaknesses and vulnerabilities because he has a pretty comfortable lead against Biden. So he doesn't really feel the need to do that. And he may be right. With that being said, though, Vance does kind of compound some of the biggest issues. That's already a political liability for Donald Trump, namely abortion. J.D. Vance is an anti-abortion extremist for all intents and purposes. He compared abortion to slavery, and on top of that, he doesn't support exceptions, even in the cases of rape and incest. Now, on top of that, he signaled support for a national abortion ban on his website, calling for an end to all abortions. And to make matters worse, he even signaled opposition to no-fault divorce. And this is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that, like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally 
you know, they were, they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy. And so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses like they changed their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term. And maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical, but it really didn't work out for the kids of those marriages. So, I mean, what's the conclusion? Are women supposed to stay in violent marriages for the sake of the kids? I don't think that that's a really healthy environment for the children either. But, you know, he's not explicitly making any policy prescriptions. But rhetoric like that doesn't necessarily instill the most confidence in people. And you kind of get to see where he's at mentally. Oh, he he's very regressive. He doesn't actually care about choice for women in any regard, seemingly. And he's just kind of a piece of shit, right? So, you know, that's gonna hurt him among some people if they take stock of you know the vice president see americans they don't want abortion to be banned and republicans have paid for roe v wade being overturned at the ballot box or battle box if you're joe biden <laughs> but putting that aside you know you know it's a it's a liability but jd vance isn't going to be the president donald trump is Having said that, though, this is a bad choice from a campaign standpoint. But if Trump wins and this proves to not really be that big of a deal, well, as I said, he has a loyal servant willing to implement his entire agenda, including Project 2025 on day one. So it's a bit of a risk reward situation for Donald Trump. Uh, but for everyone else, it's terrible news. Um, now, on the subject of Project 2025, J.D. Vance essentially endorsed the core tenet of Project 2025 back in 2021. So, you know, what Project 2025 aims to do is dismantle the administrative state, consolidate power in the executive, so that way the president can kind of implement his entire agenda unilaterally speaking. Now, this is something that's been floated in right-wing circles, but here's what J.D. Vance was saying back in 2021. I tend to think that we should seize the institutions of the left and turn them against the left, right? We need we need like a debathification program, uh, but like a dewokeification program in the United States, right? So like, let, let me give you a couple examples. So one of the things I've always been very sympathetic to is this idea that we don't have a real constitutional republic anymore. What we have is an administrative state, right? The administrative state controls everything, right? Uh, so to the point that like when Donald Trump wins, he can't even sometimes get his people in core positions of authority in the administrative estate. It's like, well, do we have a constitutional republic? The founding fathers actually created a very powerful chief executive, a very powerful president. But if he can't even fire the, own, the people in his own administration, like, is this really a, a successful republic? Um, so, so a lot of conservatives have said we should deconstruct the administrative state. We should basically eliminate the administrative state. Uh, and I'm sympathetic to that project, but another option is that we should just seize the administrative state for our own purposes. We should fire all of the people. I mean, I, you know, like, if, and I, I think Trump is going to run again in 2024. I think he'll probably win again in 2024. Uh, and, 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 and he'll win by a margin such that he will be the president of the United States uh, in, in January of 2025. I think that what Trump should do, like if I was giving him one piece of advice, fire every single mid-level bureaucrat, every civil servant in the administrative state, replace them with our people. And when the courts, because you will get taken to court, and then when the courts stop you, stand before the country like Andrew Jackson did and say the chief justice has made his ruling, now let him enforce it. Because this is, I, I think, a constitutional level crisis. So Trump has tried to distance himself from Project 2025, but now he has a running mate who explicitly endorsed the hallmark of this entire agenda. So, yeah, there's that. Also, for marginalized people, J.D. Vance is horrible news. So let's talk it through. As Aaron Reed reports, J.D. Vance is the primary sponsor of a national ban on trans health care done through a ban on teaching about gender affirming care in higher education, including medical schools. Now, to be clear, we're talking about a ban on all trans health care. Children, adults, doesn't matter. All trans people will no longer get the care that they need, meaning they will forcibly detransition or they would be forced to forcibly detransition if that bill passed. But if Project 2025 actually comes to fruition, Trump can do that via executive order. Trump also supports banning health care for all trans people. So we're in a situation where you have two people who are very, very hell bent on forcing all of us to live in their own dystopian reality. They don't actually care about the other half of the country. All they care about is winning and conquering and crushing the opposition, right? 
Now, again, I don't know if J.D. Vance actually believes the bullshit that he's espousing, but it's really a distinction without a difference because it doesn't matter whether he believes it or not. He's dangerous, and Trump choosing him as his running mate is a pretty big red flag. So, you know, take from that what you will, but I think that it's really important now, especially that Democrats get it together and they exert pressure on Biden to drop out so that way they can choose somebody who actually has a chance of beating Donald Trump. Because in the event things hold and Trump really does win, I mean, not that much will change with J.D. Vance as his vice president, but, you know, he's going to feel that much more emboldened having having someone there that's going to back up every, you know, authoritarian impulse that he has. So that's really worrying but i mean the situation is already bleak so in the grand scheme of things this doesn't change things that much but you know will it affect the ticket i don't know i don't necessarily think that it's going to help him but i don't really think this is going to hurt him that much but only time will tell so yeah he's rolling with jd vance who is uh, a demon so yeah good luck america